Hey guys, welcome back to another exciting edition of the Art and Business of Writing podcast. I am your host, Chris Jones, where we focus on helping you to write efficiently and market effectively. Today, I'm excited. And I think if you know me, you know that I really geek out over the marketing side of writing because I love the challenge of seeing, you know, how far can we push it? What can we do to really get our names out there? What can we do to really sell more books? What can we do to really uh, build our influence as authors? And my guest today really focuses on that. He's going to drop a lot of gems for you about landing pages and what needs to go on your book landing page. If you've never thought about having a book landing page, you may want to consider one after this episode. He's also going to be talking about uh, the difference between Facebook ads and Google ads and which one he prefers. And then he's also going to dive into reputation management because that's part of his uh, core competencies. He's going to talk about how you can really control what kind of reviews you get. So basically, he's going to talk to you about how to get positive reviews on the site and keep those positive reviews flowing. But when you get negative reviews, what you need to do with those. So you're really going to be excited to hear from AJ today. AJ is a serial entrepreneur and founder of GMR Web Team, GMR Transcription, and RepuGen. AJ has years of marketing experience as well as helping small businesses grow to their fullest potential. AJ has previously worked in executive positions for Fortune 10 companies and continues to craft a name for himself by building online businesses from the ground up. So without further ado, let me bring you AJ Prasad. Hello, AJ. Welcome to the Art and Business of Writing podcast. How are you today? I'm pretty good. How are you, Chris? Doing great. Doing great. So expand a little bit on your bio and talk about, talk about kind of how you got into digital marketing. Yeah. So, you know, I started my career and most of my life I was in, in the in marketing profession. I started with really doing marketing for very large corporation. I was very fortunate ones to to move up very quickly as you know head of uh, vice president of marketing uh, strategy at a very early stage after a few years in uh, in corporate life and i have spent most of my corporate career in marketing or in uh, in management like uh, either head of the product or the ceo of the companies so essentially my my foundation is marketing and uh, strategy so that that is my foundation and when i now it is 13 years back so geez, you know time flies but when i decided to to go on my own marketing was very natural for me but i opted for digital because uh, having paid my dues for large corporations i had decided that i'm going to be focused on on the smaller businesses for my services and uh, digital marketing at that time actually no one was even offering it to small businesses. Everyone was, uh, and part of the reason was that small businesses did not understand the need for digital marketing. So that's what, that's what happened. You know, I was always in marketing and strategy. And uh, when finally I decided to go on my own, I just decided to, to, to focus on digital marketing because that was, you can say, the unmet need at that time. Right. So which aspect of digital marketing did you like begin to learn when you started to transition? So f just to give you a quick background, so one of my, you know, six, seven jobs that I had in my, my <laughs> previous life was the CEO of a dot-com company. In the, in, in, you know, that was the dot-com boom back in uh, late 90s. And uh, so I was very, you can say, among the very early uh, learner, among the among, I would say, the, the old style marketers to understand the power of internet and where it is going. So I, I knew that. So when, when I first started, actually, you know, the search, there was only two things that you could do. Of course, people needed website, which believe it or not, most of the small businesses did not even think that they needed a website. They would say, why do I need my, need a website? I already have a brochure, you know, and then the only other thing that somewhat worked was the paid advertising on Google. So I started with, uh, with of course, the website design. So I built a team of, uh, I, you know, I'm not a programmer. Now, now you know that I'm only a marketer. So I, I hired a graphic designer and a programmer, just two people, and started with that, you know, my services. And then, then I was managing the paid advertising at that time. So that's how, that's, that's where I started. 
Wow. So what was the, what was that transition like for you going from traditional marketing into the digital space? Like what was the learning curve for you? So my biggest learning curve actually was that no one believed in digital marketing at that time. So, <laughs> so, so, so that, that, was, that was a really, you can say, a rude uh, awakening for me, which meant that I had to go and, and give talks and explain to people why they needed marketing. The other thing that was very interesting actually about digital, which I loved, is uh, as I told you, you know, my foundation was strategy, market research, marketing. So I am fairly data driven. And in marketing, when I was managing TV advertising, for that matter, radio advertising, it was very typical, like I've all, where, you know, you would know that it is working or not working, of course, from the results of the sales. But it, it was very difficult to pinpoint why something is not working. In digital, everything became so crystal clear. So you, uh, you know, one, one thing was, was the tracking in how much money you have spent, what worked, what did not work, what's the return on investment. It was, it is so easy to see. So that was a big learning curve for me is to, when the realization that any activity, any money that I'm spending, I know, you know, where it is going, what kind of return it happened and what worked and what did not work. Oh yeah, no, I definitely think that's the the biggest shift that's happening right now. I used to, uh... I was working in print for a long time in editing, and mm -hmm. just oh, just over the last year, I've seen a lot of advertisers abandon print to go digital because digital has so much data. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, exactly. you know where it's going, you know who to target, you know how to target it. So basically, you can pinpoint exactly where you want your advertising to go. I will and tell you, when I was running, in, I was head of strategy for a restaurant chain, it was my dream to be able to target like one customer at a time in our marketing. Most of the marketing was on TV, right? And or print or uh, radio. And this was my dream that I, I can just pinpoint exactly who my customer is and I can go literally at one at a time if I need it. And of course, now email marketing lets you do that. Exactly the same thing. So, you know, yes, it, it has been a really, you know, th this, this change is, is very welcome in marketing. Yeah. Now, before we go too deep now, I want you just for our audience, define what digital marketing is and what digital marketing is not. Okay. So anything that you are, you, when you are using internet to generate your business electronically, so whether it's internet and, and I am for the sake of this discussion, I'm adding email as part of internet, because obviously without internet, there won't be any email. So when you are using the internet for any marketing you can say it is digital. And then traditional marketing will be your TV, radio, print. That would be the traditional marketing. Okay. Now, which aspects of digital marketing do you really work in the most? You know, uh, we actually, we have totally evolved as the digital marketing has evolved. So, you know, we started offering search engine optimization very quickly uh, as early as I think uh, 2007 when we realized that, you know, now that works, search engine optimization. In about 2010, 11, we started to offer, you know, social media marketing. Of course, throughout, we just totally evolved with the latest trends of uh, uh, website design. So we have always kept on top of it. Uh, now, of course, uh, mobile is becoming a very big. So mobile marketing, we have a specific strategy the video has come to to life so of course now you know video marketing so to uh, i i have a team of five people who are like uh, you know who who does uh, video animation and all and then then as now reputation is is become really huge so we are not only we have been managing reputation for our clients but now we have even cre developed our own software to help them gauge customer satisfaction and get reviews and everything. So as the this has evolved, we have also evolved. And typically, our for our customers, we are their digital marketing agencies. You can think of it as we are their digital marketing department. So we do everything for them, for our clients typically. Now we have some significant clients, I would say, for who we are only doing uh, reputation management. Because we have a software and, and you know, it is uh, online reputation is becoming so important 
that of course now people are coming to us and say you know we are okay with everything but we need uh, reputation management so again most of my clients everything we are doing digital what we do is when the when the client comes in we take a look at their business we come up with the best strategy for digital marketing that so it it may be doing everyone should do seo is my attitude but is paid advertising make sense you know if some something is a very low profit margin then it may not make sense to do uh, pay, paid advertising the social media makes sense if if it does what platform social media so what we do is we do analysis we come up with a recommendation in terms of what they should be doing and then we execute it okay now you talked a few a little bit about reputation management what exactly is reputation management and why does it matter so nowadays when you know the latest research that that uh, data that i have which is a national research it suggests that 92% of the customers before they make any decision to buy from a company either brick and mortar or online but especially online any purchase they go and they check their reputation but and the reputation is a couple of thing of course you have reviews on the review sites like yelp and google and depending on your your business for medical industry you have health grades and vitals and all that right so so that is one thing they want and then they also you know go and try to find out about you what is written about you so for example if you are a dentist and you had some some poor experience and any profession you will you make some mistake and if someone made a big deal out of it and it shows up on the website now it looks like so you had seen 10000 patients and one patient had some complication but if you look at the re- online and find that dentist looks like that is all the dentist does <laughs> is the, <laughs> the big big news you you get is that how he or she is screwed up so you know you want to need to bring that into balance it will be there so what we do is we just want to make sure that there is good news and bad news so depending again we literally have to have a strategy but everyone needs review now no matter what business you are in so what we did is we created a whole platform where you know totally automated platform for generating reviews you know for our clients and then in the process uh, because we get a lot of customer feedback before see, essentially what we do is we first ask them about their you know level of satisfaction and then once who says i'm i'm really satisfied then we request them to go and write a review so what happens that we start getting a lot of positive reviews and then uh, you know their comments we do the analysis so they can see if someone is is unhappy you know why they are unhappy if they, someone is happy so we do all that analysis to to help with the operations now one thing i will tell you about reputation is typical if you look at reviews of any business it in generally it is understated in other words if it gives 3 star the chances are that there should be 4.2 star and and the reason for this is that unhappy people are more likely to go and write reviews than way way more like 10 times more likely than happy people and by the way we knew that even in the offline world when i was in the restaurant industry we used to tell our managers all the time that listen one happy customer will maybe tell another person that you know i went to this restaurant and had a great experience one unhappy customer will tell at least 15 people that they run into and don't go to that restaurant and the same it's the same emotion it drives also the writing reviews for the so when when you go to a restaurant and you have a good experience the chances are that you are not going to you know chomping at your bits to go and write great thing about this uh, restaurant and even if you have int- intentions to do that you may forget about it by the time you re- reach home but if you are fuming when you come out guess what you are you are not going to forget it until you go and write and and vent so that is the that is part of the problem with the review sites like yelp is it really understates the performance of most of the businesses wow no that's very true though it's very true the people always look to leave that negative review you know when they're when in that moment <laughs> correct yeah No, when I think about like authors, you know, because authors, you know, authors need digital marketing, but even the reputation management is very big for authors because because of where the reviews land. I mean, for authors, it's it's Goodreads, exactly, it's Barnes right. and Noble, it's Amazon, it's Kobo, it's Smashwords, all these different places where people can leave reviews to find out about your book, which also equates to book sales. 
Exactly. So, so you see, this is the reason what we did is we created a platform where we drive happy patients or, you know, I'm saying patient because we have a lot of uh, doctor clients also, but the happy customers to the most relevant uh, review sites for them. And, and the best thing is that the unhappy one gets a place to vent immediately so they can vent to the, uh, to the company itself. And then the company now has a chance to go and recover that, uh, uh, that unhappy uh, you know, customer by contacting them back and touching base versus if, if I go out and I'm, I'm really unhappy and you don't know that I'm unhappy, that you don't have any chance of getting me back, right? Because there's nothing you can do to recover my, get my business back. Right. Now, here's a question. So if, if I go on to Amazon or if I go on to Barnes Noble or, or Goodreads and I see someone's left me, you know, a less than desirable review for my book, like say my book, you know, they left me a two star review. What's the best way to handle that? Cause I mean, of course, you know, you, you shouldn't delete it. I know that for sure. But how, what, what do you say is the best way to handle a negative review? So the best way to, to review is the way that, you know, that I have, I have done it the way I have managed for at least, you know, one, one of author client is that you, you give, so for example, I'll give you an idea what, what I did. So one of the author client wrote the book and, and she told me that the best thing, you know, in terms of marketing, and I'm like, you know, uh, I don't know what marketing you can do other than the fact that you get a lot of feedbacks. And she was like, wow, you know, that's an interesting idea. So what we did is we have some, you know, that we we found we found the right, the right database. You can nowadays you can get any database. You can go on uh, Facebook and do that. And essentially, we ask people for their feedback. So we said, okay, here's the book for you, and all I need for you is to read the book and give us a feedback, okay? And when when after you give the the feedback, you know, we will uh, you know pay you fifty dollars. So. So really, I mean, it's not nothing illegal. We are not asking for to write review in order to pay. Just say, read the book and give me the feedback so that, you know, I can do whatever I can and, and do a revision. Now, of course, when I did this, we did not have the platform. So when they gave the good feedback, then we requested and said, hey, you know, that's fantastic. You know, someone who was happy and said, do you mind writing it on Amazon? Someone who was not happy then we just talk or someone said, yeah, you know, your book is, is nice, but there's no wow factor because that's one thing that I remember that popped up a lot with her, with that particular book. It's like, yeah, you know, it, it is informative. It is nice, but there's no wow in here. So she got it. And, and I'm like, okay, do you want to revise the book? You, you want to redo it? I mean, it is totally your choice now. So you do it now with my platform. You know, I can just have them write their comment on the platform itself and then uh, then see, straightway direct them to Amazon. So, you know, this this process of asking happy customers to go and write review, we were doing it manually for five years now. It's like two years back, I just decided that I want to take this human uh, factor out because, you know, some people are very comfortable asking people to go and write reviews. Some people are, you know, shy, very reluctant. So I just wanted to take that human element out and that's why we developed this software right so i guess it's more, it's a more effective way is to have them contact you with the reviews and then you can screen out the ones you don't want to have actually exactly. go review. ah and by the way this platform that we have that it does exactly that so it screens out immediately essentially this is how it works it will ask you to rate on the scale of zero to ten okay so if you are zero to five then we look at we think it's a negative so you get a message saying, we are really sorry, you know, that you're not happy with our service or this book or whatever. Let me know where I can improve. Okay. So let them vent. If someone gives six, seven, then we call them neutral. We don't know either they are going to be happy, unhappy, whatever. So we just thank them and say, give us the reason for your rating. And when, when someone is eight, nine, 10, we consider them as promoter. Right. So now we ask them and say, you know, that's the basic, the net promoter score, you know, the scale that you have zero to 10. So then we said, oh, thank you very much. We are always trying to to keep people happy. Would you mind sharing your experience or, you know, your opinion on any of the site? And if you say yes, when you click on it, 
then it will just it takes you to it gives you the option of which review site you can go and write. That's very smart. <laughs> that is that's very that's a, that's a very great way because for, so based on what I heard you say, just so I can regurgitate it for the audience. So when they write into you, the people who have the low scores, you use those basically as your research and development to figure out how to improve the product. So, and then yes, the people who give yes. you the middle scores, you don't bother with. And the people with the high scores are the ones you have write the reviews and really drive the marketing. Exactly right. You know, we try uh, to convert them into our, you know, advocates, you know, as, as yes. our promoter. And that's a great way to, to, to manage reputation and brand. I, like, I love that. So on the digital marketing side, what are some what are some really easy starting points for an author to get their feet wet into digital marketing to promote their books? So, you know, I always suggest that, the uh, you know, you can always do version, right? One, two. So the, the initially, the best investment in terms of marketing is to put the book in the hands of whatever, depending on your budget, you know, but at, you know, do it at least uh, 50. But I, I like it, you know, this particular uh, person that I did was 500 in their hands. And say, you know, and you are honest because you are looking for the feedback and, uh, and, and just say, here's the book that I have, I have published. It's on Amazon. Please, you know, buy it and uh, read it and, you know, give me your feedback. Here's, here's where you can give, give, give us your feedback. And then after that, you know, when someone is really, if, if everyone is saying that this is a really amazing book, then you just direct them to, to write, share that, you know, which is, perfectly okay but if they are saying you know like i said in this particular person it's like there's no wow so if there's no wow then then here's what happens yeah the book can be can be very useful but again it's not going to excite people to go and write a review about it right and uh, so promoting it becomes very difficult but if you have a wow factor in a book like it's amazing i i read read a book last year from you know about the the nike by the nike founder phil knight it's called uh shoe dog and it was amazing i must have mentioned this i'm mentioning to you now i've mentioned this to at least i would say 500 people i'm like hey you know you want to see you know how you know you look at nike and you feel like hey you know they are so successful if you see what business goes through in order to be successful you should read this because again I see most of my audience uh, are entrepreneurs or, you know, someone who on their own. And we always have a tendency to look at the success and say, wow, you know, he has, it is so fantastic where he has reached. But if we take a step back and we, we learn what he or she had to go through in order to get to where they are currently, that's, that is the really, to me, that is a real learning, right? So, so, you know, that, that's where it, it helps. Okay. And so now for, for authors who are just, you know, who are just getting started and they've got their author website set up, do you recommend that they create a landing page for the book so that when people come to the website, that's the first thing they see? Yes. What I suggest is have a landing page. And, you know, I would even add the first, you know, the first chapter, for example. You know, some enough pages to give them like a, a feel for what it is what the book is and so they can they can download it and of course in order to download you capture the email address and now you have a chance to get their feedback right so as you are even writing it or or before you finalize that okay let's publish it you know now with the digital world it becomes really easy for you to get the right people to come to the site download the book you know which is which is basically free they just have to give you your email address and the name and then get get their feedback of you know where you are and what you want to do so so again you 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 start to make your own group that that is that you're bouncing and getting their feedback as uh, before you even publish so yeah definitely having a landing page and and having part of the book available is a great starting point no, I, I like that because whenever I go to a page, you know, with an author and they've got a landing page, it's very enticing to me. And I'm automatically putting my name in the email box so that I can get more. So I was wondering, yeah, kind of what your take was on that. And what do you think makes for good landing page design? Like, is there certain, are there certain elements that should be on a really good landing page? Sure. So landing page has to, and this is true actually for home pages and everything. 
So, so customers, you essentially in three seconds or less, when they come to the site, they should know exactly what it's all about. Okay. So, so for any landing page, most important thing is, is what is your header. Okay. The title. So the page title will, will already, when someone has gone there, they, it will verify whether they are on the right place or not. Okay. And so the first thing is you have to have the title. Then you have to have a, what I call the subtitle or you, a, a quick description, which could be, you know, one line, two line. Essentially just, just builds your expectation in terms of what it is all about. Okay. And then you have a copy of the book, you know, which, where you, you have the, the copy and then of course call to action. So these, you have to have these four components. Now, in terms of how you design it, you know, these days video, because a lot of people, as you know, they, they listen to rather than listen to a one minute video than read the description of what it is. So yes, you know, these days landing pages having, having a video makes a lot of sense. Having a video on the left side and right side, you have some uh, information. And then below that, you have the text of the video. Again, it will, it makes a lot of sense. So if you have video next to it is information and call to action. Below that is the text. And below the text is again the call to action, which is, of course, download the free copy or whatever. You, you have to have that or contact us uh, or something. So that is becoming a, a very critical element of landing pages. So when, now when we are doing paid advertising, for example, we create landing pages because, you know, if someone types a very specific keyword like digital marketing, you don't want them to go to a page that says SEO because they may not know that SEO and digital marketing is the same thing or, or is it just SEO is a piece of digital marketing. So then they need to go to a page that says digital marketing for whatever business, and, you know, the, you want to be as specific as possible so that when I go there, I feel totally relevant. So, but now we have started adding videos in on the landing pages, even for paid advertising, and we are seeing a higher conversion because of that. So, so definitely those are the elements that, that you, you have to have is header, you know, of course, copy, have that copy in the video form. Also, you can, the most the best thing is animated video or, or whiteboard animation so that it is very clear. There's no, no confusion about that. And then call to action. You know, I'm glad you brought up video because you know video has pretty much been imposing its will on us for the last couple of years. But really now, I mean, it's very much in a premium. You know, with Facebook really going towards video and all the social platforms really putting a lot of emphasis on video. For a person who really can't put a for an author, you know, not a person but an author who really can't put a lot of money into a video, what can they do to make their video look good? But even though it doesn't have that kind of professional polish on it. So first thing I'll tell you that, uh, you know, the, again, a lot of money is in the eye of beholder, right? So if, if you don't have, uh, if the author doesn't have a couple of thousand dollars, then, then of course uh, you go in a very different route. But creating like a whiteboard animation is not that expensive. You know, there are, there are many freelancers who will do it and you can get it done for you know, most probably like $50, $100 even. You know, I'm not saying that, of course, to get that, then you have to know what you're doing. Uh, right. If you go to an agency, like like someone comes to me, of course, I'll, we charge $1,000 for one minute video. And then after that, you know, in, in the same thing. So if it is 1.5, one minute and 30 seconds, then of course we charge 1500 But th then of course we understand strategy. And when we are creating the copy, it is really so if if you can write the copy so you know for the video so so if you can write the script that really explains you well the rest of the thing can be done very cheaply you know on the you know there are a lot of freelancing sites uh, right now fiverr and elance and all that where you can you can find people to to do it for you if you don't have that then you probably need to go to uh, so if you don't have even 100 dollars for example then i would say you, if you search on, on Google, there are a slew of them. Now, of course, we don't use them. Uh, like I told you, I already have a team of five people. All they do is create videos. And then I have a team of writers who are writing uh, the scripts. So we don't use them. But there are a lot of those freewares available on the Internet where you can go and create your own whiteboard animation. 
you can do the voiceover and you can put the script and it will do the you know the animation part and you know what i mean by whiteboard animation it seems like it's writing on the on the board and and someone is talking uh, and yeah, the yeah. voice is coming from the side so yeah i've so seen those piece, so they're very cool yeah and and so so that is like i said you can there are a lot of freeware so someone who has absolutely no money then i would say yeah there are a lot of do it yourself ideas are there the on, only thing that i will caution is if you do not have any money for marketing the chances of success of the book is is really 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 small because you know as as you you probably see even the really famous authors when they write the book they are on tv and they are all way all over right uh, promoting the book and because they know that if they don't promote just being in the store is not going to to sell uh, as much right. now if you if you are not famous then it is almost it is a you know, much bigger challenge right to to get in front of people who would even try it so that's one thing that i always i know a lot of people who have written books and but they don't have money to promote and uh, and it's it's kind of tragedy but you know you can try some social media you can uh, you know i'm i'm not saying it's impossible but it becomes in you know very difficult right now you mentioned social media just now what do you think about facebook ads you know the i was like a non believer in facebook ad for a long time because we could not figure out how to get the return on investment but now facebook has gotten to a point where first everyone is there and then you can target you know your customers as closely as as you want right you uh, know you can literally buy psychographics uh, demographics whatever and then if you if you have a right plan so with the right landing page and everything now we have started to see the conversion so i am becoming a believer in in the facebook ads it is still not same as google because remember on google people are searching for that service so if i am searching for a plumber and i see a plumber ad on on uh, google and i click to go to that page of course the chance of my conversion is much higher than you know i am just scrolling getting uh, all of a sudden in the news feed i see ad for plumber and i tap it to go and see what the heck it is all about so so the challenge there for facebook is ad is that you have to make it very interesting for someone to to want to you know to to come and visit and then you have to have a very strong call to action so when you are trying to build your base your list for example facebook seem to work very well so so you know if 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 you want uh, the business owners suppose you are a business writer you, you are writing a book on marketing and you want marketing professionals to you know it is targeted to marketing professional and if you are trying to to create a list so that when you when you launch the book you can uh, um, do a email campaign to them facebook works very well because you can have an intriguing uh, feed that they will they will you know tap to go into your uh, landing page and you have a very easy call to action is like okay give me your name and email address we'll email you this uh, this product so because there's no cost to them you get, so you know that that uh, one thing you know that facebook is only showing that feed to exactly who you want you know your customer to be who your prospects are so for generating list i have seen it work very well in terms of uh, and then of course once you have the list you can do drip marketing for even straight conversion you know we are seeing decent you know success nothing no, it's not as a scalable right now as google for example so google for certain items if it works you can just explode it and you know we have clients and and we are by the way google partners also so we because we have been managing and that was the first thing that i started doing now of course i have a team of uh, experts who manage it and we have have clients who we started with $5000 per month uh, budget and now they are spending 150 and still they are getting uh, really good return on investment facebook typically is not that scalable you know if you are trying to sell it directly in terms of building the list uh, you know which is a, of course a very important piece of many marketing it makes a lot of sense Now, with, now I'm glad you mentioned that. So, Facebook 
you're saying is really great for list building. What's the what's the best way to encourage people to join your list? You know, if you're an author, do you give away a book? Do you use a video? What do you think works best? You know, the best way is to give away something of value. I'm not saying the whole book. Maybe you are giving away, you know, book summary or something so that they f- they feel like, oh, so here's a some. I'm just throwing an example. Suppose you are writing a book on entrepreneurship. You know, in terms of what you have to do, you know, what is, I mean, what's the journey, typical journey that you can expect to go through if you are an, an entrepreneur. And so if you, if you're writing a book like that, and if there's a five page summary that I see that and I, and, and I, because I'm an entrepreneur, remember, you know, Facebook lets you do that. So I see that I'm like, wow, you know, this is interesting. And I tap it and all I'm seeing is like, okay, you know, I can get the book summary. And it, the summary tells me, so you build the right expectation and give them a good product, you will have a lot of conversion there. And then, then so, so basically you are building your list at the cost of maybe 10, 15 cents, you know, per list, uh, per person, which, which, is, which is darn good because I know of people who, have, who are very successful in the business that I, I'm not in, in there, but I, I've helped them in you know, by building a list and, and offering their services and product to them. And I know of people paying, you know, on the average, like $3 per addition to the list. And they, once they had 10,000, because what happens that when you have a significant list, so you have a opt-in list of 50,000, all of a sudden you will have people coming out of woodwork to, with their own product and say, Hey, you know, would you offer it to your list? And I will do, I will split the sales. And, I'm sure that you know this is a huge market. I'm like I'm not into it. I've helped some people in in who are in that business. So if you can generate for 10, 15 cents per person, very targeted list, and if you have hundred thousand, it is what like thirty thousand dollars that has cost you, right? You know, or or fifteen or twenty thousand dollars. And if you have an opt in of hundred thousand, it is just amazing value you know, that you have, that you, you can probably use it to keep on adding to the list and then generate, you know, pretty decent amount of money just by being, offering other people's product that will be valuable to them. So, so yeah, the list building is, is very interesting and social media, and I'm not, not just saying uh, this is the Facebook is the only one. Social media in general, you know, lets you really narrow target who you want uh, your audience to be. And then if you are doing it right, like like the only thing I have done for someone who is building it is, of course, we created the landing page and, the and you know, we integrated their, uh, the email, the opt-in so that people are opting in. And, and we made it like literally double opt-in. You put there and you get a link and then you click on the link then because now you're do- double opting in and then, then you get the, you know, the, the summary book. But this this was someone who wanted to, to start offer start business of helping you how to write copy and he used to charge twenty thousand dollars for like a one long page of web copy so obviously he was good but he said well you know now i'm selling my my hours so he he created like a program and he needed people who were interested in uh, in in his program and he charged now he is charging ten thousand dollars for the program, but he would he would teach ten people at a time. So all of a sudden, his per hour income grew up very you know just multiplied big time. And so he wanted to build the list of of uh, budding wannabe uh, copywriters, and that's that's what we we helped him you know build the list. And then of course later on, he started marketing other people's product in a you know at some point it it what happens that these things start to roll on its own momentum. So we are no longer doing anything for them. But he, and this, we did that seven, eight years back and he's still in business. So obviously something worked for him. So yeah, the list building is a very interesting area. And now thanks to social media, it is much very inexpensive to build. This guy built it. And that's what I was saying that he was $3. He built it through pay-per-click advertising. So essentially, wow. it was like somebody, all you need to do is to become a copywriter kind of thing. And his average conversion cost was three bucks 
for someone who downloaded his his book but then because he was he was financially well off so he i think he spent 30 35000 initially to build the list and then of course after that he he must have generated millions of dollars already from that wow that's that's a pretty inspiring story and i know for you know if you scale that down for you know for people who are in the writing space who want to just get started with something small you can build your list the exact same way you know just creating exactly. the exactly. creating the ad and, putting the and, money in yeah you you mm-hmm. you have a list you build a list of 1000 people and now all of a sudden when you when you are ready who has all these people have already read your one paragraph they have already given you feedback right and then then when your book is published all of a sudden you can again go back to them and offer them to just you know go and and read the book and and write a review you're not saying write a good review i'm just saying write a review and uh, and we will give send you a gift certificate and which is totally again totally legitimate so long you make it very clear in your communication we are not asking you to write good i just want honest reviews to right. to write now of course if you use a platform like uh, like you know one what we have created repugen then the platform automatically does it so that it asks only uh, happy people to write, write reviews but again <laughs> we are, we never say even the bl- platform will never we just don't encourage people to go and write who are not happy to go and write review versus so we just encourage but it's not like when someone is saying i'm giving you zero on the scale of 0 to 10 we don't beg and say please don't go and write reviews anywhere <laughs> because then that that would be not correct right no that that makes perfect sense <laughs> cuz you always want to make sure you have the happy reviewers out there uh looking at your stuff and keeping taking care of you very good very good well aj i want to I want to kind of bring us down for a landing with just some fun questions. How does that sound? Sure, sure. Fun fun is always good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so who are some who are some, you know, digital marketers that, you know, who inspire you today still? You know, uh it's it's kind of interesting the big digital marketer, I mean, I I started following, you know, Seth Godin because he was when 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 I decided to get into digital marketing business, I would buy any book that I, i could lay my hands on to get up totally up to date on it and you know he is still there although he has become more of a you know business guru seems like and then then you know there was this uh, uh, you know matt cuts who was at google actually and i followed him very closely because of course seo was so important and uh, and i just wanted to understand you know how you know what google is looking for to you know in order to rank someone So so you know and then then after that I have started to to now I'm I keep up with more with uh, you know Mars and you know some, there are some and there are some uh, forum of digital marketing uh, experts that I keep up with but you know in terms of big guys that I started with following were obviously Seth Godin and then later on Matt Cutts Okay so what kind of what kind of fun things you guys do in the office to kind of you know to spur in creativity and keep things li- lively and fun. Uh you know you, we are always challenging ourselves to uh, you know for improvement and I'm always encouraging people to do experimentation in the in the office because marketing is is uh, in a funny way marketing can never be perfect because you can always be improved. So I I just uh, so so we are you know of course we do some fun stuff you know in do a party and we post it on the, on our, on our social media and all those things so, you know so those are very typical thing that every company does we do that you know we'll celebrate birthdays and parties and all but but one thing that i that i think that i it keeps my team always motivated is i encourage them to be creative i encourage them to think and in, i and i really encourage them to bring ideas because i right. i know that i don't have monopoly over good ideas so i need everyone's collective you know brain there you know for improving so right. so yeah i mean just by by keeping the environment light and uh, listening to it's not unusual for me almost every day someone walks into my office and suggests something or someone from i also have you know remote office with lot of employees every day i get one to emails with suggestions so you know i i try to keep them very motivated excited about what they they are doing 
All right. What's uh, your favorite book? Can be any 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 type of book. What's your favorite book? Ah, you know, I I have bunch of favorite books. I would say, but the you know the like you know I'm I'm always reading something. So you know now the one book that I have read five times already is uh, a book by Jim Collins called Good to Great. So I think that I bought it five years back, and once a year I read it. You know, the, some other book for entrepreneurs, if if you your audience has entrepreneurs, is Zero to One by Peter Thiel is, is very interesting. You know, of course, I already mentioned uh, Shoe Dog. But one book that I suggest everyone read, no matter whether you are entrepreneur or employee, you know, whatever, you are husband, housewife, you know, house husband, whatever, I don't even care. So long you're a person, there's a book called Mindset. And and the name I, you know, the author is is totally slipped. So when is, I read is that the this one, book, is that the one by Carol Dweck. Yes, yes. And actually, when when I read this book, it affected me so much that I went and I bought ten more books to send uh, to give it to some of my most favorite people and say, you know what, this, this is the book. So this, you know, which I cannot think of any other book that I did that. You know, I I did buy books for my you know, I have two sons so of course I I bought Think and Grow Rich and gave both of them one you know once they were in college and all that but this is one book that I just I purchased 10 of those and and I just I tell that everyone should read it have you have you read that since you know about the uh, the author Think and Grow Rich or Mindset No 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 the Mindset You know I had a copy of it years ago cuz I bought I bought a copy someone recommended it to me and then um, we had had a, we had like a house fire and we lost everything, and so I ah. completely forgot about the book until you just mentioned it again. I was like, oh yeah, I remember that book. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just kind of it's a fantastic book, and and yeah. I don't even know when it was published. I just I saw it's it mentioned book. in it's a, it's some. It's a pretty podcast. old book. It's a pretty old book. It's probably around two thousand two thousand one. It's it must be because you know a lot of the examples of John McEnroe and all who were in the eighties. I mean. Yeah. Today, the problem that, that I have with that book is when I give it to young people, many of them don't even know those examples. I mean, unless you are a, a really into tennis, I don't know how many yeah. people know John McEnroe anymore. But, I don't think many. <laughs> yeah, but exactly. But so, so, yeah, it must be that, you know, someone must have written it a long time back. But I saw it mentioned in, in you know, 10 books everyone should read kind of uh, some list. And I was just intrigued, and I I got one from Amazon, and and I was just it moved me so much that, like I said, I went and I I purchased ten of them. Wow! Now, last question, last question before we wrap up is, uh, what is something you like to do for fun? You know, we I like to travel personally, so the that is the fun part, and this this is the reason I I have always tried to build my team so that it can operate without me. Now, of course, I don't go out for three months of, or six months, but I do take two weeks, sometimes three weeks, uh, you know, two weeks vacation I take very often. I am out of office for three weeks, you know, quite frequently, a few times a year. And, you know, the, everything works like uh, clockwork. So, so that's where I'm, I'm really fortunate with the kind of people that I, I've uh, attracted in my company right now. And then... So you know, traveling is is the is my you know one big thing that fun. And then you know, I always say I like golf, but I watch more than I play. <laughs> so you know, I'm a horrible golfer, but I love to to watch. And I I really like that the whole environment of golf. You know, when when you seems like you are in the middle of the uh, you know like bustling city, and yeah. all of a sudden looks like you are. You know, you're totally on your own in the middle of nowhere. So, so, so that's <laughs> so, see, that's the the thing I really in, uh, like about golf. Awesome. Well, AJ, it's been great speaking with you today. Can you let our audience know how they can reach you? Sure. So, you know, they can always visit my website, which is gmrwebteam.com, and they can also also reach me by email. It is AJ A Y at gmrwebteam.com but uh, i will just warn someone if you if you are reaching me through my email then it may take a couple of uh, days because i get somewhere around like a couple of thousand emails every day so i try my best to respond to everyone but on the subject line please write 
you know your you know the show so that i know that what it is all about because i also get obviously when out of 2000 my guess is that at least 1800 is junk mail <laughs> so yeah, i don't right. want to delete someone's email <laughs> thinking it's junk awesome well hey thank you so much for your time today thank you chris it was really good talking to you awesome thank you hey author chris here I want to tell you about a program that i'm really excited about called group gold for a long time i would post on my facebook fan page only to find crickets very few interactions, very few connections. That is before I discovered Facebook groups through the program Group Gold. Facebook Group Gold program is the most complete one of its kind to help you grow, engage, and monetize your Facebook group. Mark Mawinney, the program creator, will walk you through every aspect of how to create, manage, and run your Facebook group so that your tribe is coming to you. It makes it easier, doesn't it? When you've got people interacting with you because they want to be there. That's the beauty of Facebook groups over Facebook fan pages. Ever since I started the Facebook group gold program, I've been growing my group, building my audience, and I've got people in there who are active and who want to be there, hanging out with me every single day. You can have that too. Just visit my website, www.readyrightlaunch.com, and under the offer tab, select group gold. Then you can see for yourself the magic of Facebook groups.